My name is Larissa Ritzman. I work for the Shellwater Bay Indian Tribe. I've been with the tribe for about 11 years. Um, a little background on me for what we do currently here. I'm on, I'm the director of our natural resources department. I'm on Pacific County's weed board. I'm on Pacific County's Marine Resources Committee. I'm also on the multi-agency coordination group for green crab in Washington, as well as, the, as well as the Willowbrook Grace Harbor Estuary Collaborative. So we're pretty intertwined in anything going on right now that involves green crab and our watersheds down here. So this is just a, a brief overview of kind of where we are, where we've been, and where we think we're headed right now in terms of uh, Willapa Bay and the tribe's efforts in, in the Bay. Um, so this is kind of a, a bigger map of the overview of what Willapa Bay looks like and what Shoalwater's land holdings in the Bay are. Um, it's about 6,000 acres that we have in fee and trust within Willapa Bay, which is about 70,000 acres. Um, and all of our trapping in the last three years has only occurred in the area that you see on the right. So just in the watersheds immediately adjacent to um, Toakland, basically, um, we have helped in doing trapping efforts outside, but we don't count those numbers, obviously, with our own numbers. Um, so what I'm showing today is just what we've done in that in this immediate vicinity. Um, so current little brief history on our program, um, green crab were discovered in Wilta Bay in the late 90s. Um, obviously, I wasn't here when that happened. I do know my predecessors did trap because I think that's why I have minnow traps, but I couldn't find a history of if we had documented presence um, in Tokeland at that time around the reservation or anything else. Um, I didn't know. I mean, yeah, we didn't know about the history of this. So we didn't even hear about the rediscovery in 2015 or that there was more work going on. It was only in 2020 um, when I was contacted by Sea Grant um, about establishing a sentinel site in Tokeland, um, which is one of their monthly monitoring stations that they do for six months between, um, yeah, like April and September, I believe, is our timing for that. So we didn't we started trapping, I think we did one sentinel side trap set in 2020 and only in September. And then we did a bigger effort in the fall. I think it was around October or the end of September, October, where we did one big trap set and had, yeah, 400 traps out over five days and had 2000 green crab. But um, because of what we were being kind of, I guess, communicated what the biology and how green crab were behaving. We didn't trap anymore after that because they kind of let us know that it was like a fluke thing. You'll see numbers in fall, but the green crab wouldn't be present through the winter. And we didn't have any traps at that time other than a few minnow traps. So in 2021, we did set more traps. Um, you'll see in some later slides what our, our timing of these things look like. Um, we didn't start trapping again in 2021 until April. Um, and then it was kind of hit or miss throughout the summer. And then we did some more targeted trapping in the fall uh, with shrimp pots. And I think we caught like 4,000 crab in a month. And that kind of, after sharing that with council, um, council declared an emergency in January of 2022, which kind of aligns uh, a little bit, I think right after Lummi. And um, I'm not sure what Macaw's timing was for that. and and the state declared an emergency as well. Um, so in 2022, last year, we did 2,245 trap sets and captured 42,708 green crab just around Tokeland. Um, and so far this year, they're trapping right now. We've done 650 traps for fi about 5,185 crabs so far. Um, and so we're on, we're on a higher trajectory this year, even so far than we were compared to 2022, which was our first full year. We trapped year round last year. Um, and yeah, Wilva Bay is, is a dynamic environment. I mean, it's, it's highly susceptible to invasive species right now. It is a stressed environment, much like what Joe was, I think, discussing in his previous presentation. It's very heavily impacted by uh, invasive eelgrass, japonica. We have native eelgrass also, but it's just not present. We have a native species acting like an invasive in Wilpa Bay, which is burrowing shrimp. Um, the shellfish growers are having lots of problems with that, with farm types and activities for growing oysters on ground, above ground, all these culture types that they're doing out here. Um, 
And yeah, and since there wasn't a lot of communication, I don't think around green crab, I don't think a lot of people knew maybe how all of this was interacting together. Cause I think there were a lot of things going wrong in the late nineties and early two thousands that, um, they were probably just creating a, a really horrific environment out there in the Bay. It seems like right now, it's just, it's hard to say. Yeah. And that's one of the things that's one of our issues is, is, uh, documenting the impacts. Um, this is kind of what our trap sites in Tokeland uh, are looking like right now. And this is just a short video. I'll just play it. This is a pot with 118 in it that we pulled, but, and it's pretty typical. So we have a lot of incised tidal channels. Um, a lot of that sticky bay mud that you just sink up to your armpits in. Um, there is some sandier areas, uh, mostly on the west side of the reservation um, in Alder Street which is on the bay side, so on the, the ocean side. Um, there's a lot of sand deposition out there. I have a giant uh, berm project that was dredged with materials, and since it keeps washing out, we keep getting, I don't know, half a million cubic yards of sand that washes into the estuary and fills in some muddy areas. Um, so we lack a lot of substrate. It used to have, I mean, there used to be reefs out here with Olympia oysters. Um, burrowing shrimp have caused a lot of the problems. So there's not a lot of substrate in areas. So it is pretty much a mucky mess. It's very high energy out here. We have one of the biggest tidal prism on the, on the West Coast. Um, like I said, yeah, eelgrass burrowing shrimp impacted, especially on the fallow oyster beds that aren't being farmed. There's a lot of that covering these areas. Um, Spartina mounds, we had that other invasion in the, the 90s and early 2000s that we're still still monitoring and 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 managing for. Um, we do have rocky areas in that photo, obviously at the top. Uh, that's one of my employees sporting um, a breach in a, in a berm right there. But um, that's the only area that we have a lot of rocky substrate is just around the marina. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just some details. So our site trapping varies year round. We kind of chase the crab around, it seems like. Um, we set and retrieve all of our pots um, two hours before and after a low tide usually. Um, and we only leave them out for 24 hours for checking. We have not, except accidentally, left pots out longer than 24 hours if we forget one. Um, and we have captured because of even not even just even a quick trap set. We've captured birds in these things. We've captured uh, a weasel. Um, we are seeing salmonids get into our shrimp pots. Um, we have sculpin. We've had surf perch in them. So we do get some bycatch and we always try to release all of our bycatch that hasn't been consumed by green crab. Um, and all of our trapping right now, yeah, is shoreline trapping up high off bank. Um, water dip, obviously a huge thing. I mean, we can't trap sets at high tide or or set traps at high tide because it's just not a feasible um, option right now in our in our current system. Um, so yeah, we'd have an explored deep water trapping, um, and we do have an airboat that is ordered and is coming. Hopefully, we keep asking them our timing on it. Um, we're hoping it would be here by the end of April. So myself and another staff member have gone through MOCC and have our airboat module and have all of our hours in to do that. So that will open up a lot of new avenues for us to get around in the bay um, for our work too. This is uh, what we kind of did when we started out. So what we've tried um, before we kind of had some, some funding and a good program, um, we were just using what, we, what materials we could get. Uh, so a lot of the old oyster bags we collect from the beach. So all of those hex sets. This is an octagon. There's um, some ones that look like actually some East Coast traps. We'd use those. We'd add, add funnels, uh, polyline rebar for weight, um, the gill net buoy, treat them like basically a crab pot or a fray bell. So that was that was pretty easy to make. We did those. Um, we did use fakuis a lot because that was kind of the standard. Um, we actually broke a lot of fakuis because our crabs, we'd catch too many and they'd break those pots. Those little zip ties don't hold up on those funnels on the side. Um, but I listed, yeah, all of the trap types that we've actually run through and used a lot. Um, and our methods were, when, when we're in high energy areas, we do stake them to the banks with rebar. Um, and we haven't really found any success with the small entry type pods. So like the minnows and, and fray bills, I think a little bit. Um, so currently all we run is the one inch 24 by 24 by 10 shrimp pots, um, because as you can see in our amount of traps that we set and the amount of crabs that we caught, we didn't even capture, I don't even know if that's 200 
crab and all other trap types last year. So 42,500 of our crab were out of shrimp pots. So that's what we kind of stick with. Um, so currently, yeah, our, we run, I've got four staff. Um, we're a small department. We only have six total staff, including myself, and we do everything. So I've got four guys usually out there half time. Um, and then I've got another guy who is part time. Um, he's a contractor. Um, this is just the gear that we found is working for us. These flex buckets are amazing for stacking, carrying, squishing, smashing everything. So we ordered those off Amazon, the duck sleds for duck hunting. Um, since we have everything that's only accessible by foot, usually that gets all of our gear and our crab to drag around on the mud flats. Blue steel polyline, gill net buoys, diamond dozen out here. We've got a garbage can full of um, ear tags. Cattle ear tags is what we tag our pots in so we can identify them. Um, a crab hook is just, we've just got a modified three prong rebar that we welded together. Um, because we do have to throw that out to cap, get our pots in sometimes if the tide's too high. Um, everything else that works for us is zip ties are our best friend and carabiners, flagging. Um, we use GoPro Hero 10s with a fuel battery extenders, which do work in our system for our water. So that's good for some of our video work that we do. Um, bait that we use predominantly is herring, sardines, or anchovies, but we've tried just about everything else and it all kind of works. Um, they do really like clams and ghost shrimp, but we don't have enough time to just go out and get ghost shrimp all the time and have clams. But we've tried bear, we've tried elk. Um, the guys just kind of bring in what they didn't want to eat and their dogs won't eat, or their dogs probably would eat it, but we've just thrown that in pots too. So we're pretty uh, opportunistic in terms of what we've thrown out things out here. Um, oh, you our, have about three minutes left. Oh, sure. This is our crab hook, and that comes in handy. Obviously, you can see there's our floating away duck sled, and I'm um, trying to figure it out. We actually, actually threw the hook at it. Um, this is our gravids problems. We capture a lot of gravids out here. Um, this kind of shows our peak timing for them, which is about now, and then how they kind of flatten out the end of the rest of the year. Um, and our smallest grab that we've gotten is a 44 millimeter, so just over young of the year. Um, our problems right now that we're kind of running into, we I have a lot of issues with data sovereignty um, right now with kind of how we're sharing data everywhere. Um, our shrimp pots that we're currently running don't fit large crab, which is one of our problems. Here's a video of this guy getting stuck. Um, pot security. Um, none of our trap sites are secure, so people can steal our pots, which they've done. Seasonal tides are a problem. Manpower, hunting season, my staff kind of disappear. <laughs> so September is always hit or miss in October. Um, we are right now, according with a trap builder, to build us some custom traps, and the airboat obviously is coming to. Funding right now is through BIA Invasive Species. Thank you, Robert. Um, we're looking at other opportunities and some long-term that's going to be perpetual funding. Uh, things we don't know is, yeah, the impacts of Dungeness. Um, they did have a really high, great season for crab this year in Willapa. They caught a ton, although the prices were terrible. So uh, yeah, clams and oysters, um, eelgrass, all the food web. The larval transport is one of the big things in Willapa, uh, looking at how that's happening, um, where they're coming from, where they're staying. Um, I see a lot of problems with consistent trapping pressure on outside areas, so we can do all we can do in shoal water, but if not everybody else in the bay is doing their part, it's there's never going to control a problem or even have an impact on the problem. Uh, that's available practice being used consistently. Yeah, we see a lot of folks still using a lot of fukuis and, and minnows, and I think they have their purpose in places, but... I think in Willapa, um, we've shown that shrimp pots, especially with our work and with the oyster growers work, that's what's going to capture and remove a lot of crab. And this is kind of just some graphs of our monthly capture rates, our percentages for females um, and males. Um, these are our gravid captures from last year. This is just a spreadsheet showing what we look like on our totals. You can see 2022 is great, September 2021. I don't think 2020 even shows up on there because it's a blip. This is our weekly CPU by some sites. Um, Dan Fagerly has helped us get lots of signs. Thank you, Dan. Um, and we currently compost our crab in our garden. We're working on doing a composting facility. My crew makes everything great. We have the support of our council and the community. We have great relationships with local entities. Um, collaboration is really heavy right now with Green Crab. 
Um, but yeah, we don't seem to be having an impact on the population. Um, so we don't know how long this problem is going to keep going. And um, at the end, and there's me releasing the dungeness and getting stuck in the mud. So thank you. <laughs>